All right, y'all, welcome back. In my previous video, we went through a handful of beginner functions that are bound to help you work smarter and faster when building worksheets. My name is Emily Taylor. I'm one of your trainers here at Pragmatic Works. And in this video, I'm gonna uncover five more intermediate Excel functions that you must know. I have a sample worksheet with fake data for you to follow along with and practice these functions as well. You can access this by clicking on the link in the description below. Also, because that bonus function was such a hit in my last video, I went ahead and included another bonus function that's gonna help you optimize your time and the worksheet creation process. So be sure to stick around all the way to the end to check that out. Let's dive on in. Function number one that we're going to uncover is the if function. The if function allows you to test a condition and return one value if it's true and another if it's false. For example, you could use it to check if a sales number meets a target and return yes if it does or no if it doesn't. It's a simple but powerful tool for decision making in your spreadsheets. This worksheet contains a list of items sold in a baseball team souvenir shop. In our case, we want to determine if an item has a quantity sold that exceeds 75 or not. So I'm gonna start by clicking into the cell where I want my function to be. I'm going to type in my equal sign and type in my if function. Click tab on your keyboard to open that function up. The first thing I need to include is the cell that I want to be using. And I'm going to say if H5 has a value that is greater than 75, use my comma to move on to my next argument and say if it is greater than 75, I would like this cell to contain yes. Then I'm gonna put a comma and type in my argument or my value I would like it to say if it is false. I would like it to say no. It is important to note that you need to include capital letters and lowercase letters just the way that you would want them typed in that cell because of that is how they are going to return. I'm gonna go ahead and click enter. And in this case, this number is greater than 75, but I can drag this function on down to the remainder of my cells. And here you'll see all of the cells that are less than 75 return to value of no, whereas the ones that are larger than 75 do in fact contain yes. On to function number two. We're gonna explore how to use the trim function in Excel to clean up our data. This function is essential for removing extra spaces from text strings, ensuring that your data is neat and accurate. For instance, if you have a list of names with leading or trailing spaces, trim is going to help you eliminate those unwanted characters. It's gonna make it easier to work with your data. In this practical example, we're gonna be removing all of the spaces in our cell, whether they are between, before, or after the names of the products being sold. The trim function just leaves one cell where there should be a space and removes all of the extras as well as the ones before and after our words. We're gonna click into the cell where we'd like to include this function, type in our equal sign, and start typing in trim. I can air on down and click tab on my keyboard. I'm gonna grab this cell I would like to trim, which is B5. I'm gonna close my parentheses and click enter. Just like that, all of those leading spaces are removed and I can drag that function on down through the remainder of my spreadsheet. And as you can see, this data looks very, very clean compared to what is in column B. I can check to make sure this worked. This is where function number three comes into play, len. The len function is handy for measuring the length of text strings. It counts the number of characters in a cell, including letters, numbers, and spaces, making it invaluable for data validation and cleanup. For example, if you're working with product codes or descriptions and you need to ensure that they meet specific length requirements, len can help you quickly access this. We're gonna demonstrate how to use len right here in this cell by comparing how many characters I had in this cell before our trim cleanup to how many characters I have here once my cell has been trimmed. Let's click into the cell we want to use our function and start typing len. 
tab to turn that into a function. And we're gonna start by clicking on B5 just so we can see how many characters that cell has. Close our parentheses and click enter. As you see, our original cell had 35 characters in it. And let's see how many there were once we trimmed it down. I'm gonna change this from B5 to C5 because now I'm in column C. And as you see, it trimmed down to just 26 characters. So our trim removed all of the spaces and our lin helped us see that it actually worked. I'm gonna drag that function down to the remainder of my cells. And now I've got a count for the number of characters that all of my items are named. Moving on to function number four, sum if. This one is a powerful tool for conditional summing. Sum if allows you to add up values in a range based on a specific criteria, making it perfect for analyzing data sets. For instance, you could use sum if to calculate total sales for a particular product or type of product by setting a condition that filters your data. We're gonna walk through an example to show you how to effectively use this function. Right here, I would like to total the number of hats sold. Instead of having to go through and see where my hats are, grabbing the quantity and summing them up, I can use the sum if function. I'm gonna type my equal sign and start typing in sum if. Tab to turn it into a function. And I'm going to say if anything in column E, put my comma in, contains the word hat, put my comma in, then I would like it to sum the number that is in my quantity sold. Close my parentheses, click enter, and just like that, I was able to calculate that I've had 325 hats sold. Function number five is the sum product. The sum product function in Excel is a versatile tool that can handle both multiplication and addition of arrays. It allows you to calculate the sum of products of corresponding ranges, making it ideal for complex calculations like weighted averages or financial analysis. For example, if you have a list of products like we have here and their prices with the quantity sold, some product is gonna help you quickly find the total revenue generated. We're gonna walk through this example now. As you see, I've got my quantity as well as my price for every item. We are going to calculate the total revenue by bringing in the sum product function. Tab to open it up into a function and let's grab the cells and the array that I would like to have multiply and then total all together. Close my parentheses and click enter. And just like that, Excel has went ahead and multiplied my price by quantity for every one of these rows and then totaled them all together to give me a total revenue. And now it's time for a bonus function, rank. This is an essential tool for determining the rank of a specific value within a data set. The rank function allows you to quickly assess where a particular number stands compared to others, making it perfect for competitions, grading systems, performance analysis. For instance, if you have a list of student scores, rank could help you find out which student achieved the highest score and how each student compares to their peers. And this practical example, I wanna rank our items based on which item I sold the most of. I'm gonna click into the cell that I want to rank first. I'm going to use the equal sign and my rank function, tab to turn it into a function, and I am going to say I want to rank this number 150, cell H5. Put in my comma. And the next value that I need to is, what am I ranking this 150 against? I'm gonna grab all of the cells that I want to compare. And I'm gonna put in my comma. And then I have the option to decide, do I wanna rank descending or ascending? I'm gonna go with descending. Close my parentheses and click 
enter on the keyboard. It looks like tiger possum foam fingers would be 12th if I were to rank them. Um, one thing I did not do here is I did not lock in cells H5 and H29. Um, what that means, I'm going to go ahead and do that now by clicking on my H5 and clicking the H4 on my keyboard. I'm also going to lock in cell H29 with that F4 on my keyboard. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying, if I want to drag this function down through the remainder of my cells here in this column, I don't want H5 and H29 to shift as I shift down in my cells or I drag down in my cells. So I wanted to go ahead and lock those in. Um, it shouldn't adjust my rank of 12 here, but it will ensure that when I'm clicking down into these cells, it's still pulling from and starting from H5 when I'm doing my ranking. I'm gonna click enter, and as you see, it's still showing a rank of 12, but now that I've locked in those cells, I can drag my function on down to the remainder and figure out which one sold the most. Here we've got a value of one for our rank, and as you see, it looks like tail swag keychains actually had 310 cells, or 310 sales. So that was our, our top ranking item. There's plenty more content to come. What's the most time consuming task you currently do in Excel and what function would you like to see demonstrated that I could help you speed it up? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to click that like button and subscribe to our Pragmatic Works YouTube channel for the latest training content we have launched. And if you're dying to know more, please be sure to tune in to my full in-depth course on top functions in Excel for seven of the Excel function categories and our on-demand learning platform at pragmaticworks.com. We have many more in-depth Excel function tutorials and I'd love for you to check it out. Thanks so much for watching.